Hey YouTube, this is Eddie's Tech Talk, and this is uh, uh, the second video in how to stay safe on the internet. Uh, we all know, obviously, that putting antivirus on our computers is good, and making sure that we don't click bad links, you know, in emails. We all know that those are key pieces in staying safe on the internet. But there is a little bit more you can do, which is kind of the goal of this series. If you haven't checked out, check out my first video uh, using LastPass. That way, you can keep your passwords more secure, and you'll never have to remember uh, you know a hard password again this video is focusing on something a little more advanced but something that I think everyone can tackle uh, it's adding pie hole to your environment now what pie hole is is it basically uh, in technical terms it's a DNS server that queries your DNS traffic uh, so that you can block ads now in you know normal people terms that's basically uh, a piece of hardware that you plug into your router and what that does is that blocks ads coming in at the network level and I kind of have a visual visual aid for this so we have ads out here uh, you know like advertisements that you get on websites things like that those uh, just come into your network just like normal traffic and then that is then disseminated to you know your iPhones and your smart TVs and your your computers and any other internet connected devices that you have uh, these ads along with legitimate traffic you know things that you actually want to see are pushed to your devices now in a perfect world that's fine you know maybe you'll see an ad for something you like but a lot of ads even on legitimate sites like news sites or you know Facebook or things like that a lot of those sites will lead to malicious links lead to you know viruses and things like that because the sites that these ads appear on those sites don't actually control what kinds of ads appear there so even though you might be on CNN.com the ad you you get is not from CNN it's from someone else so a lot of those a lot of times those will have viruses and things like that so what we're doing today is we're basically putting a wall in uh, between ads and your network so advertisements and those malicious things won't be able to get through to your network but you can see here legitimate traffic can flow into your network and then out to your devices and then traffic from those devices going out will also be able to flow so uh, you know there is a little bit of technical concepts here but hopefully you guys you know can pick it up this is really just what we're doing is putting in a wall for ads so the first thing that you need to do is buy a Raspberry Pi computer uh, just Google it you can buy one I won't link it below because a lot of times the prices fluctuate quite a bit there um, but then once you get that Raspberry Pi you're gonna need an SD card a micro SD card and uh, with an adapter uh, and from that point you're going to navigate you're gonna plug the SD card into your computer you're gonna navigate to raspberrypi.org slash downloads so you have the Pi you've purchased this from Amazon or Canakit or wherever you have an SD card that you bought it doesn't need to be particularly large you plug that into your computer and you navigate here and then you're gonna we're gonna get Raspbian so you're gonna hit Raspbian we're, we're basically downloading the operating system to uh, your SD card which is the storage it's like the hard drive for your Raspberry Pi so you're gonna get Raspbian Jesse with desktop download this file so you've bought the Pi uh, you have the SD card you've inserted it and then now we're downloading the zip I already have the zip uh, but you know that's what you're gonna do download the zip Next thing you're going to do is navigate to Win32 Disk Imager. A link for that will be in the description below. Uh, and then once you have the zip downloaded and this program, you're going to open the program, find the image file. So I don't, I don't have it anymore, but you'll see it here. It'll say IMG next to it. It'll say like Raspbian IMG, something like that. You're going to click that, click Open. So uh, and then you're going to choose your SD card from this device drop-down menu and then just hit right and then that's all you have to do uh, and then take that SD card out once that's done insert it into your Raspberry Pi plug it into your TV or you know monitor or whatever you whatever have you and then we'll get on with the rest of the video alright guys so now that you have set up your Pi and you have everything set up uh, don't mind this this so this is the Pi this is what you should be seeing so you're gonna hit this browser icon open this browser up and then we're just going to search for Piehole. I think it's Piehole.com, but let's just see. So we're going to go to Piehole. And then we're going to proceed with the installation process of Piehole. Now, if you didn't install the graphical user interface and you installed the terminal, you'll just have to run this command. So we're here to get this command. Uh, if you're really worried about security, you can... Um, 
install each component manually and review the code yourself, but I have decided to trust them. So then you're going to open this terminal, this little box here, and then you're going to paste that, that command, and then we're going to hit OK or Enter. All right, guys, so after that installs, we're going to get this little graphical user interface in the terminal. So this install will transform your device into a network-wide ad blocker. Sweet. Pile is free, but powered by your donations, so if you feel like donating, you can. Pi-hole is a server, so it needs a static IP to function properly. In the next section, you'll choose to uh, you can choose to use your current network settings DHCP or manually edit them. So we're gonna hit OK. So we're gonna use OpenDNS. You can use Google. Uh, there, I think their upstream DNS is 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 but I made an Open DNS account, and I'm gonna do that uh, their IP. I recommend you do this as well. You can get some more stats and stuff on your on your stuff so basically what this is saying is after you route your traffic through the pie hole where do you want it to go I want it to go to open DNS because that way I can make um, that way I can make sure you know I can see my traffic more rather than sending it into the Google black hole so open DNS we're gonna block ads over v4 and v6 so we're gonna do that so enter again we're gonna use our current network settings as a static IP uh, and that's our, my router address IP 15 to 24, sure, we'll do that. It's possible your router could still try and assign, assign this to a device, but in most cases the router uh, isn't smart enough to do that. If you're worried, either manually set the address or modify the DHCP reservation pool so it doesn't include the IP you want. It's also possible to use a DHCP reservation, but yeah, just set a static address, which makes sense. So we're going to install that. We're going to install the web admin interface. We're going to log queries. So we're going to do all that. And then this is going to install some more stuff for us because uh, we're going to want to install, um, you know, it has to install the web console and the other things that we can take a look at. So that's what we're going to do. Navigate over here just to s review the instructions again. But so what we're going to do, so that's what the web interface looks like. Actually, we'll take a look at that. Um, and then there's the API. So we're gonna install that. So like I said earlier, you can install this on other other computers, but you know the Pi is just the easiest one. So we ran the Pi. Then we're gonna have to go into our router's DHCP uh, and use it as our DNS. So we'll get in into that after it installs. Uh, yeah. So low, D, like I said, a DNS concert or a DNS modifiable router is really the best way to do this. Um, but you can use DHCP and get around it or install it on every device but it's just better to do it at the network level because that way everything that does connect or ever will connect to your, to your network will be able to, to use pie hole so it's kind of a set it and forget it sort of approach so now uh, this is going to install and do this package stuff and we'll be back uh, when that's done alright so now that that has installed uh, it's going to tell you uh, mine's not configured for IPv6. That might be because I don't use it. Yours might be configured, but that's going to give you your IP. Um, and if you set a new IP, you should restart the Pi. So if you go into your router and, and reassign the IP for whatever reason, uh, you can just reassign that. But this is static now, so this will never change. Uh, the install log is here, and then the web interface is pihole.com uh, slash admin, or pi.hole slash admin, or this. That's, that's what I'll use because that's my... That's the IP, and then this is really important. You need to write this down. I'm gonna I'm gonna save that into a into a text file. And then now we're done with this portion, so I can show you guys. So let's go to uh, wow, what was it? Uh, we'll do that one. Pi pi dot hole slash admin. That's, that's where I wanted. There we go. So Pi Hole Admin, so we can see the web interface here. Uh, and we can see no queries. I don't know what 27 queries last 24 hours is, but no queries blocked. And then this is the block list. Basically, the, uh, the way it works is it's just a curated list of blocked domains. So those are blocks. You can see little stats about your Pi, uh, load, memory usage, all that. And then we can log in to the console here We're, we can see that this is running but no one's using the pi because yeah the pi exists 
um, and all that, but we're not we're not there. We're you know nothing is configured to go through the Pi, so this is where we need to bring our DNS router into play. All right, guys. So once you log into your router, sorry for the rough cut. There was some sensitive information, but you'll want to log into your router and then navigate to LAN settings. Now, if you have trouble navigating to your router, not knowing how to log into that, you can just open the terminal in the Raspberry Pi if you're still on the Pi. Then you want to type root dash n r o u t e dash n, then that will give you something called gateway, and that's your router. So you take those series of numbers, that IP address, and then you paste that into your browser and then load that up. Uh, if you're on a Windows machine, you can also get the gateway by typing IP config uh, and then pressing enter in the command in that command prompt. Um, but I'm just doing it from the Pi here, and so you just log in that way. And I would uh, the login information, the default password is very easily Googleable, Googleable usually, uh, or you could also just uh, you know change the password is what I would encourage you to do. But usually it's printed on the side of the router on a physical label or. Uh, found on the internet so change your router password but anyway then we're going to navigate to our LAN settings and so we have our LAN you can use the Pi as a DHCP server but I think that using my router as a DHCP is, is fine so I think I can leave that um, so I'm just going to leave that but we do want to check this box so this box wasn't checked but we're going to you can see if it's uh, that this is my DNS handed out by my internet service provider but I want to DNS override that so our primary server IP so our first DNS it's going to be our pie hole, which in my case is 192.168.0.15. So we're going to do 192.168.0.15, which I believe is right. Yep. And then, so a lot of people and a lot of tutorials end here. I mean, this technically works, but this is not, not how you want to leave your server because if somehow your pie, the piece of pie hardware crashes or your internet goes down, I mean, when it reboots, this should it should reconfigure. But if something happens to that DNS server on the Pi, uh, that's really really bad. So I'm using, like I said, I was using Open DNS. That's where it's sending my stuff anyway. Uh, but if we go to Open DNS, Setup Guide, we're gonna plug in our second and third DNS to these servers here. So we're gonna put in. Um, Two, two, this 2221, two, where did that go? Where did you go? So we're going to plug in that one as our second IP, and then or second DHCP, and then they have another, they have a backup for their backup. So then we're going to plug in, uh, we're going to plug in that as well. So then we have our Pi as the primary, and then if that fails, we're going to open DNS. And open DNS never goes down, so even if, so this actually makes a more reliable network, so internet service providers do have DNS servers that go down. But in this case, we're going to the Pi. And if we're not going to the Pi, we're going to open DNS. So this is the configuration that allows this to route through to your entire uh, your entire network and everything that connects to it. Uh, like I said, you can use the Pi as a DHCP if you want. You can enable the DHCP server. Um, but I don't, don't particularly feel like doing that if I don't have to. So uh, that is that right there. Now this might not take effect right away. You should really reboot your machines, kind of reset everything um, to kind of see what's going on there. But let's see if there's any traffic. Yeah, so you can see that we we enabled it, and there's already uh, DNS queries and and stuff like that. You can see the scale 20 to 21. So that's been this is our our DNS scale in less than a minute here. So we can see a bunch of stuff. We can see um, some block domains. Uh, and then our top clients here as well, just some IPs and stuff. So um, this is it. This is what we got going. Uh, you can, um, you know, like this video, please. This guys, this, guys, this video took a long time to make. A lot of research and stuff went into this. So uh, if you like the video, let me know, uh, and I will see you guys in the next one.